Hi there, welcome back to a new video from the series Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Heartbeat But Were Too Afraid to Ask In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the knobs and configuration options that are available with Heartbeat If somehow you've missed the previous videos where we've discussed what Heartbeat is and how to download, install and configure it Please follow the link below where you will be able to catch up with this conversation. In this video, we're going to discuss some of the options that might help you to ensure a successful deployment with Heartbeat. So let's start by discussing what can you do to verify if your configuration from Heartbeat monitors is correct and consistent. To illustrate this, let's take a look on this configuration file called myconfig.yaml This file contains a single monitor that is configured to probe uptime information from the microservice every 5 seconds. So let's say you are unsure if the syntax of this YAML file is correct or perhaps if you've missed some required parameters. You can use the executable that comes with Heartbeat to verify this configuration file and after providing the configuration file using the parameter minus C, you can use the suboption called test. The test can be followed by this config parameter that instructs Heartbeat to use the evaluator that comes built in with the Heartbeat component and analyze if the configuration is correct and use the parameters that are expected. By using this approach, you can quickly identify if your configuration file is ready to be deployed or if there are any errors to be fixed. You can also use the option test to verify if the connection that Heartbeat will establish with the configured output is going to be successful. This is important because sometimes you might be trying to deploy your Heartbeat monitors, but for some reason the connection with the output is not being established, but along with the lines that will show up in the bootstrap processing of Heartbeat, you might be confused about the actual reason of it. So, to verify specifically the connection with the output, you can use the option test, but instead of providing the suboption config, you provide the suboption output. When you run this command, Heartbeat will perform a quick connection to the configured output and display in the console if the connection was successful or not. In this case, as you can see here, the connection was not successful and Heartbeat provided a quick explanation about what went wrong. That will allow you to quickly identify any connectivity errors and fix it before deployment. Speaking about executing Heartbeat, you have seen in the previous video that we've executed Heartbeat by providing an option called minus E. When you provide the option minus E, everything related to the bootstrapping and what's going on internally with Heartbeat will be displayed in the console. However, if you are interested in simply deploying Heartbeat and not necessarily looking to the console, you can skip the minus E option and directly execute Heartbeat. When you do this, you're going to see that Heartbeat will produce no output to the console and everything related to bootstrapping and the internal details of Heartbeat will be flushed to the log files. The log files are useful because you might be eventually willing to troubleshoot Heartbeat without necessarily keeping looking to the console all the time. You can access the log files from Heartbeat very easily by going to the Heartbeat folder and checking the subfolder called Logs. Everything related to the execution of Heartbeat will be flushed into these files where you can simply look into them and make sure you understand all the details that are going on with your Heartbeat deployment. It's important to know that the logs folder of your Heartbeat deployment 
will not always sit on the hood of the installation. If you want to understand where the folders and the files from your heartbeat deployment are currently residing, you can use the option export along with the native executable of heartbeat. Let's run this command here in this installation. You can simply use the option export along with the subcommand config. When you run this command, you're going to see that not only the heartbeat will display the current configuration file that has been provided as parameter, but also it will display some additional information such as the path of some strategic folders that you will be interested in understanding where they reside, such as the config, the data, the home, and the logs folder. Another option that you're probably going to be interested in taking a look at is the support for key stores. Key stores are ways for you to store sensitive data that will be listed and used in the configuration files used by Heartbeat. A good example might be the credentials, the pair of username and passwords that you might be using in the configuration files that you don't want to provide as a tax plan data. Instead, you can create a key store and store those credentials there and provide a key that you can use as a reference in your configuration files. To create a key store, just use the native executable that comes with Heartbeat and provide the option key store. Along with this option, just use the sub option create. To create a key, just repeat the process of using the native executable and use the option key store. But instead of using the option create, just use the option add and provide the name of your key. Let's call ES user for the Elasticsearch user. When you provide the, the value of this, everything will be kept secure. So as you can see here, I've just created a new key and provided a value for it. Let's create another key for the actual password. You can always list your keys by using the option list. And then you can see what keys are available to be used in the configuration files. To use the keys that you've created in a given key store, you can simply reference the key in your configuration files. So let's say we want to use the username that we've just created in this configuration file over here. To specify, let's say, the username of the Elasticsearch, you can reference the configuration file by using the notation In this example, we've just used a key that was stored in a key store and it didn't necessarily provide it the information regarding the username directly here, which we contribute to make sure that this configuration file will be kept secure and according to security best practices.